in the cycling world, we have data available to us that other sports can only dream about. Wattage is one such metric. Measuring power output in watts has become one of the most important metrics in training. But there's another side to power output that many don't consider. Calorie consumption. In this video, I want to explore how a power meter can be used to help you determine your calorie expenditure, why that metric is important, and specifically how this can help you while bikepacking. Now it's probably reasonable to assume that most riders invest in a power meter to determine how powerful they are. Power meter measures the rider's power output in watts and displays it on the computer head unit. The rider immediately knows how hard or easy they are riding and this is often compared with a baseline figure or benchmark known as their FTP or functional threshold power and more of this in a minute. This is perhaps the most used function of a power meter as it can be used to determine very useful training zones for the athlete wanting to improve different aspects of their riding such as endurance or sprint power. One advantage of a power meter over other training devices such as the use of a heart rate monitor is its ability to deal with real time data instantly. Unlike a heart rate monitor which suffers from time lag for example, if a rider decides to make a short burst, an effort like a sprint, and rides for about five to 10 seconds, that higher output is instantly displayed on his power meter. Whereas the increase in the heart rate through the heart rate monitor is going to take time to respond, effectively under reading during the effort, which isn't good. In fact, the sprint may even be over before the maximum heart rate is even reached. And that's because the heart physiologically takes time to respond to that effort. Even after the sprint, when soft pedaling, the heart will take time to recover. And in that situation, it's over recording. The other great advantage of a power meter is its consistency. And that's because it's measuring standard units of scientific measure or SI units. A power meter is measuring your power output in watts, which are joules of energy per second. A joule is an SI unit for energy, but it's measuring the exact same thing as a calorie or kilocalorie, but on a different scale and with a different name. Whereas a heart rate monitor is measuring a very non-scientific output of an individual's heart rate. Now heart rates may vary frequently between individuals and within an individual body over time. Heart rates are affected by several uncontrollable factors such as environmental conditions, health, fitness, hydration, and as stated earlier, time lags. A heart rate monitor can be a very useful tool for cyclists, but it is prone to a wide degree of discrepancy in its results. A power meter on the other hand is blind to the individual, the environment in which it's being used, or even the bike upon which it's mounted. Simply put, a watt is a watt is a watt. One watt of power output is the same whether it's produced on the track, the road, or a turbo trainer. Or for that matter, whether it's produced by a human rider, a machine, or even an elephant. Now in simplistic terms, a power meter consists of a device for measuring a force, the distance that force moves, 
and the time that force is being exerted. The force is effectively measured by strain gauges somewhere on the bicycle, and this strain is directly proportional to the force exerted. Common components where the strain gauges are placed are, for example, on the crank arm of the pedal, as in the stages power meter, or in the chain rings such as the SRM power meter, or in other clever locations such as the pedals with the Garmin Vector 2 power meter. These components typically move and by calculating the force multiplied by the distance travelled, the power meter determines the work done or energy expended in joules. When this energy is divided over the time interval, the result is joules per second or wattage. So when using a power meter, many cyclists will be interested in what is their maximum power output for a given particular time period. So for example, a sprinter will be interested in how much power he can produce for very short periods of time, perhaps just a few seconds, while an endurance athlete riding long time trials will be more interested in what kind of power they can output for several hours. The one thing that most riders will do, regardless of the type of riding that they're doing, is first determine their individual FTP. This is typically the maximum sustainable average power for one hour. Once this is determined using some sort of testing protocol, it forms a sort of baseline or benchmark against which different zones of intensity are attributed. The FTP power value is given the nominal value of 100%, so that when you're operating at 100% of your FTP, you're working at a very high intensity that you can only just sustain for one hour. So typically, a sprinter will be operating at a training zone much higher than their 100% FTP, while the endurance athlete will normally be training at about 65 to 75% of their FTP. And as fitness changes over time, the FTP can be recalibrated. So that's probably the most frequent use of a power meter, determining rider power training zones and measuring intensity. But now, to get back to the other metric of calorie consumption. The first thing to mention at this stage is when it comes to normal everyday talk of energy consumption in human diet, we talk about kilocalories and not joules. That's the figure usually printed on nutrition labels of food. And this will mean that we'll have to convert the joules to kilocalories with a bit of maths. At the same time, if we know the average power output for a given ride and the time we took to complete that ride, we can very easily determine the total energy expenditure for that ride by adding in the correction factor for hours instead of seconds and the conversion of units from joules to kilocalories we get the simple equation energy in kilocalories for a ride equals the time in hours multiplied by the average power in watts multiplied by 3.6 which is the conversion factor but wait a minute that's not the whole story the energy displayed on the power meter is the measured power delivered to the pedals and not necessarily the power output of the human. That's because we humans are not very efficient. Poor efficiency means that it takes more than the generation of one watt to deliver one watt of useful power. In fact, typically human efficiency with regard to cycling is only about 25%. 75% of our energy is wasted in inefficiencies such as heat production. And this means the measured power should be multiplied by some human efficiency number. The good news, however, is that we don't have to worry about this because the power meter takes this into account within its internal algorithm. And we can be satisfied that the calorie count on the power meter is in fact the calorie consumption of the human rider. All we need to do is go into the settings on the computer head unit and display the calorie metric on one of the display windows. And there you have it, calorie count instantly at your fingertips even when taking into account the error for different human inefficiencies, power meters are still very accurate in determining calorie count and have typical accuracies of between plus or minus 4%, which is much greater than a heart rate monitor device, which often have errors of up to 30%. It's worth pointing out that you should also accurately input personal data in the rider profile setting. Things like sex, age, weight and activity level will all be taken into account by the internal algorithm in manipulating the human efficiency value to minimise the error. 
Knowing your calorie consumption while cycling has many useful applications. For example, if the rider is cycling to lose weight as part of a calorie controlled diet. But what about bike packing? Well, for bike packing, knowing your calorie consumption will allow you to plan how much food you need to take or resupply. It can be useful in assisting you in deciding how many calories to take in your packed food or where and how often you need to take that resupply during your trip. Food is very often bulky and adds weight. The amount of food that you take will depend on where, how long and how isolated your trip is going to be. The more self-sufficient you want to be, the more food you're going to need to carry. Bikepacking is typically going to be considered an endurance sport and riders will be going out for hours, if not days. And in order to achieve this, the level of intensity will have to be relatively low, maybe 60 to 70% of their FDP. So let's look at an example. My FTP is currently about 265 watts. 70% of this, therefore, is 180 watts for my endurance power. If I plan to ride five hours bikepacking, I can easily calculate my energy consumption as follows. Five hours times 180 watts times 3.6 equals 3,240 kilocalories. And that's exactly what the power meter tells me. That's the energy just for the ride. I also need to consume about 2,500 calories per day for normal bodily function. And so the total daily requirement will be about 5,800 calories. Using this equation, I can break it down a little bit further and see that I need about 650 kilocalories per riding hour. This is all very useful information when planning my food requirements. So in conclusion, Using and understanding your power meter can assist you in bike packing because it can help you better understand your typical calorie consumption. And with this information, you can plan your food requirements much more accurately and therefore determine where, when and how often you need to resupply. I hope this video helps. I'd love to know what you think. What food do you take while bikepacking? And how do you determine what and how much to take? Please share your ideas in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumb up, share, and perhaps you'd even consider subscribing to the channel. <laughs>